Yo, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at this new camera from Blackmagic called the Micro Studio G2 and specifically how it performs on a drone. Now, as the name implies, this is a studio camera, but luckily Blackmagic has allowed you to record B-Raw out of the USB-C. So this opens up the opportunity to put this on a drone, which is why I'm interested in it. Uh, more importantly, the camera also records the gyro data, just like a Pocket 4K. So if you've seen any of my uh, gyro flow guides, uh, you'll know how good that works. Unfortunately, it doesn't work quite as well on this because it's not synced to the footage, but there is gyro data being recorded with B-RAW out of the USB-C onto an SSD drive. So I've been checking out whether it's a good option to be putting on a drone. So I designed a little mount so that I can mount it onto my seven inch Horus frame. Uh, I've managed to mount it up nicely and get out and get some footage. Now, as it is the winter, the weather in the UK is pretty terrible. So I've actually had to go out uh, on three separate occasions to be able to get some nice footage with this camera. Obviously it's a smaller sensor than the Pocket 4K and a much smaller sensor than the Pocket 6K. So low light capability probably isn't gonna be quite as good as that. And uh, yeah, well, you can see how it performs in this footage. First time I went out, it was just completely overcast. You couldn't see the sky at all. It was just all cloudy. So quite uh, low light conditions. So all of the three clips I recorded at 400 ISO. This has got a dual native ISO, just like the Pocket 4K, 400 ISO or 3200 ISO. So I filmed this at 400 ISO, but as you can see in the overcast conditions, it, uh, it's quite dark. Uh, so I had to adjust that in Resolve to be 640 ISO, uh, just so that I had enough exposure. Uh, but as you can see in the dark areas of the trees and stuff, it's really, really struggling to pick up any detail. And it's just, yeah, whether that's the sensor or just simply because it was a, a dull day or maybe because I just underexposed a bit. I think in those scenarios, uh, really, you should probably go up to 3200 ISO and stop down. But I really didn't want to have to use a, a lot, a really heavy ND to be able to do that. So still getting to grips with the camera, but overall it does produce a pretty good image. Uh, the next time I went out, uh, I was a little bit late going out, so it was golden hour and the sun was just setting. Now in the golden hour footage here, it was struggling even more on picking up uh, any of the shadow detail. There's just, not enough light for it to pick up the shadow detail at eight. I had to bump this up to 800 ISO and I used a bit of false exposure added just so that it wasn't completely underexposed. So yeah, it probably could perform a bit better if I'd have bumped it up to 3200, but I had limited time to be able to do it. As you can see, the sun was going down. By the time I landed and changed the settings, it would have been over, so. And then finally, finally the weather broke in the UK and I was able to go out when the sky was blue and the sun was in the sky. I did manage to get one pack in, in nice daylight conditions to really sh try to show off what the camera would be capable of doing. And you can see that it performs really, really well at 400 ISO. I was able to increase, uh, close the aperture down to about to 5.6 or 8. So uh, it increases the sharpness and didn't have to inc didn't have to add too much of ND, ND, only ND8. And as you can see, with a 90 degree shutter this was filmed at, it's producing really nice, sharp, high quality images. Some of the footage is a little bit fuzzy and that's where the gyro stabilization doesn't sync up with the footage properly. So that's a shame. And hopefully they can fix it in a future firmware update. 
I've already contacted Blackmagic and supplied some sample footage and hopefully they can get that fixed. Okay, so what did you think? Personally, I think it's pretty good. The low light capability, definitely not as good as a 6K and yeah, definitely slightly worse than a Pocket 4K if I'm being perfectly honest. But when it's got a dual ISO, there are ways around it. With a Pocket 4K, I've never had to bump it up to 3200 ISO outside. Overcast conditions or golden hour can do them all at four to 800. So having to bump this up to 3200 when you're shooting outside is a bit odd, but it is not really designed to be doing that, I, I suppose. So yeah, definitely has some limitations there. As for controlling it, the little buttons on the side they're very, very small and uh, the menu system is really quite slow to react. So changing settings is a bit of a faff, but it's doable. My power button has actually sunk into the body of the camera slightly. So I have to really get my nail in to be able to turn it on and off. And as you can see, my uh, I have quite small fingers and <laughs> Look how much bigger they are than these buttons. So anyone with big chunky fingers, um, you're really going to struggle with changing the settings on this one. So yeah, changing the settings is a little bit more difficult than on a Pocket 4K and a lot more difficult than on a naked 4K. And uh, the quality of the footage is slightly worse than a Pocket 4K but it could well be a nice little stepping stone between a GoPro and a Pocket 4K. Uh, the fact that you're gonna be able to use the same lens on this as you would on a naked 4K, and you'd be able to use the same frame as you would on a naked 4K and a naked 6K, um, it could well be a nice little, uh, a nice option for those who are looking for something a little bit, not quite as hardcore as a naked, black magic um, but need something lighter and smaller and a nice little stepping stone between GoPro and a proper cinema camera. So yeah I hope this video has been interesting and uh, you've enjoyed looking at the footage. Let me know what you think in the comments and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Laters!